Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you guys for tuning in. We have a real special show tonight for you. We're here uh, broadcasting on a holiday. Thank you guys for taking the time out to spend the day with us. We're going to have fun. We're going to learn a lot. This is going to be very interactive. Some of you know, some of you don't already know, this show is called Black and Blue. It is a transition from the lab. That Those of you that have followed the lab, you know, we used to talk about people with uh, businesses, products, or positive messages. Now we highlight individuals that are in the law enforcement arena or topics that pertain to some whether it's a, a new officer, whether it's a seasoned officer, whether it's a retired officer. However, this time we will be, we will be discussing more on the political aspect on law enforcement and where we, we see it now and where we hopefully it will, uh, is gearing to go in the future. All right. And I know some of you may know him. Others of you may not. Uh, we got Justin Fleming backstage. I will bring him to the forefront. Uh, like I said, we're broadcasting on Coach Clee on Facebook. We're broadcasting on Black and Blue, so if you have not already done so, subscribe to those pages. We are broadcasting currently on LinkedIn for under Clee Tillman. We are on YouTube under Coach Clee and YouTube under Black and Blue. I know that's a, a head spinner and very confusing, but if you have not already done so, subscribe to those pages. I understand that there's going to be a transition in the Facebook world when it comes to podcasting, so it may. Uh, rumor has it. I don't know if it's true or not, but we're trying to get ahead of that game, all right? Uh, also, we got to give a shout-out to one of our sponsors. Sponsors One Way Publishing, where they can turn a mere thought into a book that's bought. And we'll discuss that a little further along the way. Right now, I want to introduce and bring to your attention our guest, our guest who took the time out of his day to come on this platform and show some love. He's a good friend of mine. I've known him for years. I've known him since elementary school. I got to know him a little bit more uh, backstage while we were discussing some things. But he's a husband. He's a father. He's the current nominee for the Democratic Party of State representation here in Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, when, after this video right here, he will be on the stage. And you can ask him any questions. Justin Fleming, thank you for joining us. We will be right there.
And again, like I said, I'm going to bring him here momentarily. I forgot to give a shout out. It is Memorial Day. So, of course, you guys saw the video. Shout out to all parachute riggers. I'm very partial toward them, past, present. Uh, but anyone, seriously, anyone that ha has been in, a veteran who served, a veteran who paid the entire, the, gave up the full price, you know, they, they've done everything they could. Or any veteran that passed on, we want to remember them on this day. So we give a, a shout out and a, a special salute to you. Thank you, guys. But without further ado, I'm going to bring him in right now. Justin, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, Officer Tillman. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for, for finding time for, to have this conversation with us. We're going to have a good time today. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And just to echo your comments, um, you know, with, on Memorial Day, uh, it is important to pause and reflect uh, upon those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our mm -hmm. freedom. Um, you know, I've, I've had, uh, tons of friends and family members serve, um, you know, some who, who did not return home. So, right. um, mm -hmm. it is, it is so critical on this day and, and really, uh, all year to reflect, but, you know, Memorial Day is, is especially set aside for that. So again, to echo your, your, um, your point there. Thank you. And yeah, thank absolutely. you for your service to our country. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Not a problem at all. And I, as you kind of led into it a little bit, uh, you told us uh, uh, briefly about yourself and um, and some of your friends and family. Um, but can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah. So, um, as you said, I'm a I'm a husband, father. Um, Susquehanna Township is my home. This mm -hmm. Dolphin County is my home. I've, I've lived here all my life. Uh, practically born in polyclinic, uh, lived two miles away wow. from it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, just uh, briefly went to Millersville for three years. And, uh, you know, we called Lancaster County our home for a little bit, but uh -huh. um, really born born and raised here in the in the Harrisburg area, Susquehanna Township specifically, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, chose to, chose to raise my family here. Um, I have, uh, you know, happily married for mm -hmm. 20 plus years. Um, my, met my wife in high school at Susquehanna Township, our children attend high school or, uh, attend school year. Mm -hmm. uh, my son's a freshman in high school. So, uh, when he, uh, hopefully when he graduates here and he's, uh, part of the class of 2025, uh, he'll be the third generation to graduate from Susquehanna Township. So proudly right. call it home. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. Um, and I served on the board of commissioners here for the last, mm -hmm. uh, eight years, um, and, you know, I know we'll talk more about that and its its impact on law enforcement and, mm -hmm. and, and our police department here and, and just our overall perspective. But uh, and just recently was was fortunate to, uh, as you alluded to, win an election uh, here, the Democratic nomination for the newly redrawn House District 105. Okay. Um, it is it includes 17 precincts in Lower Paxton, as well as all of Susquehanna Township and all of Pembroke Borough. And, um, you know, I'm honored that the, the the voters uh, went to the went to the polls and and chose me as their nominee on the Democratic side. Mm -hmm. um, there was a Republican uh, who who was able to to get on the on that the Republican side of the ballot as a write in, and so we will have a, a spirited campaign heading into the fall. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to um, earning the votes of uh, voters of of all parties, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. And I'll certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll certainly serve uh, uh, everybody, regardless of party, if I'm fortunate enough to uh, to win the office. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure you'll do a uh, phenomenal job. Uh, and like you alluded to, uh, pre right in your current position, uh, you're a commissioner uh, for, you said, about eight years. Um, what are your experiences being a commissioner and, and what what? What were your goals to actually when you were when as you sat on the board to try and make the at least the township a better place, a more safer place? Yeah, so I'll I'll take you back to when I first ran, which was uh 2013. Okay. Um and if you remember at that point, uh there was a lot of turmoil with the school district. Mm -hmm. Uh and you know it, it's it was really interesting. So, you know, the obvious choice of would be to run for school board, right? If you're concerned right. about the school district run for school board, uh -huh. but I wanted to take a different approach. Um, okay. You know, the, the I was asked to I was asked to run for commissioner, um, you know, it, just to bring a new uh, fresh outlook on the position. Mm -hmm. And really, Susquehanna Township is in a unique position in Dauphin County. I think we're one of three municipalities in Dauphin County that shares the same border as the school district. 
So unlike mm-hmm. a Central Dolphin, for example, where you've got Lower Paxton Township, Middle Paxton Township, East Hanover, mm-hmm. um, you know, Pembroke, there are a lot of different municipalities that feed into right. – um, uh-huh. It, that feed into the Central Dolphin School District, and it, and it may be West Hanover. I may have made, may have made a mistake, West Hanover rather than East Hanover. <laughs> but um, you know, you've got multiple municipalities that feed into the Central Dolphin School District. With us, it's it's one and the same. You know, the, whether you're talking about the township government mm-hmm. or the school district, we have the same exact tax base, and we're serving the same exact um, populace. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's really important to me. It was really important that our township engages with the school district and i'm happy to say we we are in a much better place today than we were then um you know the level of cooperation with the school district in in a number of different areas you know Mm -hmm. coordinating on um you know building a partnership in in terms of uh you're getting a sidewalk on elmerton avenue uh that goes directly to the high school now which was a need for years building that partnership um we're going to partnership on some communications items and hope to do a joint newsletter um and just the just the enhancing the enhancing the um communication with the administration um the elected officials Mm -hmm. a lot of all that is a lot of that is taking place as well so and i'm proud of that because it needed to happen it needed to be done and Mm -hmm. um you know, I'm I'm really proud to to have been a small part of that. Nice man, I didn't know a, a sidewalk was coming to Elmerton Avenue. I remember actually riding my bike. Uh, this is I'm not dating myself uh, from my house to on Elmerton Avenue to the high school for weights for football in the summertime. And remember how narrow the side of the road was, where technically I, yeah, I, I rode on the opposite side of the street, which you're not supposed to do. But I, if I was mm-hmm. like, if, I, if a car is going to hit me, I want to see it coming, so I have time <laughs> to get out of the way as opposed to it be behind me. Well, and so many kids did that for years. I mean, you've got the kids in in Harris Hills or, mm-hmm. um, you know, or or up on Brookfield or whatever, mm-hmm. who are, you know, coming down, walking down, you know, going behind the church, maybe yeah. uh, onto Elmerton Avenue, crossing the street onto Elmerton Avenue. And now um, there's actually there's a pathway. Um, there's a sidewalk already built, um, you know we struck an agreement with a developer. In fact, the township struck an agreement with a developer in the school district to get the permission to, uh, to, to build a a path uh, that's that's now, that now goes the whole length of, of Elmerton Avenue. uh, It'll take you right, right to the high school um, where the little crosswalk is there Mm -hmm. uh, with the, uh, at the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Um, And in fact, there's a path coming the other way too, from like the, if you're coming down from Oxford court runners use that path. Um, to go through so yeah i mean it's 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 one example of of many that that we've been able to collaborate and Mm -hmm. uh and and cooperate with the school district good 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 things coming excited for that thank you thank you and then uh, your your experiences here what have your experiences been uh dealing with the police department or law enforcement uh in your eight years as a commissioner so i have been uh, you know, I will say, and we, and we talked about this uh, a a little bit beforehand, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I continue to be impressed with the police department and the law enforcement apparatus here in Susquehanna Township. And, and again, that's not only due to the leadership of, you know, director of public safety, Martin, Captain Mm -hmm. Reber, um, but it's each officer individually. And, you know, one of the privileges of serving as commissioner has been to uh, sit in on the interviews of police Mm -hmm. officers uh, who wish to join the department. And I'm proud to Mm -hmm. say, um, you know, even for the ones that we don't select, Uh it's it seems to me it's a high caliber of officer and a high caliber of person who wants to join the police Mm -hmm. department here in Susquehanna Township. And so, um, you know, it's been. It's certainly been difficult here recently filling positions uh, on the law enforcement side. And, you know, that's for a myriad of reasons if if we want to get into get into some of those. But um, I will say we are not we are not hurting for talented officers. Um, And, you know, it just goes to, you know, we've had community policing in place for a couple of decades now. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, you know, community policing may be, you know, hot new terminology from a national perspective. Yeah. Right. But we've been doing it for quite a while. And Mm -hmm. and I think you can speak to this better than I can being a member of the force. You know, it's ingrained in what we do. And so, Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, the leadership is always looking for officers singularly and individually to build the, that community um, on the beats that they have. Um, regardless of where your coverage area is, you know, you're encouraged to get out of your car. You're encouraged if you see kids playing, go and talk to them. Um, you know, all of the, all of the, um, you know, uh, all of the touch points that, that Chief Martin has or, or that he strives to, to, to have officers make with the community, um, that helps to build that trust and that cohesiveness. Mm -hmm. And, and just the fact that, you know, unlike some other jurisdictions and it's well documented, I mean, you know, the Susquehanna Township Police Department does not view our residents or our populace as their enemy. Right. Uh, oh, no, we, we are not in conflict. Right. There is not an inherent conflict between the community and our police department. And so, um, right. you know, I'm, I'm, I was happy, you know, I'm happy to say that was the environment I came mm -hmm. uh, when I first was elected. And that's the environment that still persists. Um, you know, an, another piece of it, and I'll, I'll just, you know, put this out here too, is, um, you know, I've sat on, uh, I've been a part of um, one management team, one management negotiation with the police department. Mm -hmm. um, there have been two that have taken place while I've been on the board. Okay. Um, I was a part of one, one management negotiation team. Um, and again, I was pleasantly surprised at that experience. Um, the collegiality and the cordiality between mm -hmm. management and, and law enforcement. Um, you know, were there, were there occasional areas of disagreement? Absolutely. But uh, I'm happy to say we were always able to, you know, we've not had to go to arbitration. Mm -hmm. It has not been contentious. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have been able to gather, uh, you know, a block of uh, a block of folks in the room who represent the police interests um, and folks in the room who represent the management interests and come together, um, you know, with the union, uh, you know, in a, in a very um, just in a in a in a professional, cohesive manner. Man. We've always been able to see eye to eye. And that I'm proud of too, because you, mm -hmm. you know, you hear other stories about, um, you know, labor strife and, uh, you know, and, and sometimes it's necessary. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, you know, the fact that the fact that we have had, um, you know, peaceful negotiations for lack of a better term, um, ha and have always be able to, been able to come to an agreement without getting an arbitrator involved. I'm proud of that as well. Good, good, good. Yes. And I know you, you touched on a lot of uh, key points right there. And like you said, uh, the, our department is a community organ and, uh, and like the, each beat we're encouraged to get out and, and interact with the kids, uh, to talk with it, have uh, just daily. How you doing? How is school? Uh, we go through the schools uh, during peak hours, which is from the time it opens to the time it closes. And you become very familiar with the students. You become very familiar with the staff, uh, the teachers. It just becomes second nature to the point where it, you don't even see it as it's a chore because you just see it's part of your duties. This is part of your day. Uh, right. And, and it, it's a good feeling. Uh, of course, uh, some some people may know I grew up in the township as well, went through um, the, the school districts. So I know the school districts as a student. I know them as a parent. And I know them as an officer as well. And it's a it's a very humbling feeling to actually walk through the schools at different stages in life and still have a appreciation and pride. Uh, for for that area, uh, for that school, or for for those moments, uh, coached as well. Uh, talking about community policing and to see the kids like give back. They, they always say to give back, and to, to give back at the kids playing while playing football at a young age to watch them flourish now is a wonderful feeling. And I say all that to say this. I kind of want to take a step back and ask you: uh, Are there any mentors or any influencers or anyone that has touched you, uh, past, present? or current right now um, that has uh, helped you develop into the man that you are? Yeah. I mean, I, first and foremost is my father. Um, you know, I have mm -hmm. a, I have an interesting personal story that, uh, you know, I got into a little bit during the campaign. Um, you know, I, I, my dad was a hardworking guy, blue collar guy, he was a truck driver, um, you know, busted his tail and sacrificed to give me everything that I have. I mean, he moved us here mm -hmm. to Susquehanna Township. He's a great, my father's a graduate of Susquehanna Township. Mm -hmm. um, it's class of 72. So he knew uh, how good the school district was. He knew exactly mm -hmm. what he was setting us up for. Um, and so I, I moved here in second grade 
and and pretty much went all the way through um, short short stint at uh, at another school my sophomore year, but mm-hmm. uh, came back and graduated from Susquehanna Township High School and spent nearly ten years uh, in the school district and and that was the best gift he could have given us locating us in this township, um, you know. I, I, so my dad is, is first and foremost, and I just, uh, have an immense amount of respect for him and, and, you know, what he did for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, an- another person that, that folks will be familiar with, uh, Mr. Mr. Reggie guy, um, longtime civil rights activist, uh, here in the Harrisburg area. Um, and I'll tell you growing up, you know, low income, we were, we, I'll just say we were we were poor. There just wasn't a lot to go around, right. um, you know, but it was almost like, you know, having examples of, you know, black professionals. Mr. Guy was an attorney, mm-hmm. um, you know, that you could that you could look to and say, hey, you know, it, it's possible to to, you know, to be a, a young poor black kid, you know, mm-hmm. but there are you know, if you work hard enough, there are there are examples uh, that you can look to where you can, and, and for me, you know, I knew I always, um, you know, I, I told my dad when I was a little kid, one of my, my dream was to wear, wear a tie to work. Cause I thought, <laughs> you know, that was, um, you know, like you, you, right. And you had your, your father, uh, who was an influence to you in law enforcement. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that was sort of reinforced by my dad too. You know, I had, um, you know, being a being a uh, a truck driver is an absolutely honest living. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we I knew pretty early on that my hands were pretty useless. I can't build anything, or <laughs> you know, I just uh, unfortunately my dad can rebuild carburetors and he worked on cars. It must have skipped a, a generation, so <laughs> that wasn't going to be an option. Um, Got to know your limitations. <laughs> hey, listen, I so so you know there was there was another path out there, and and to be honest, I mean my my idea of wearing a tie to work when I was growing up, I wanted to be on Sports Center. Oh, that okay, was, that was the goal. So I was a huge sports fan when I was mm-hmm. a kid. Just um, absolutely just immersed in sports. I would yeah. wake up at six o'clock and watch Sports Center and see what happened. And um, so that was going to be my idea. Um, clearly that didn't happen. Um, but, but you know, I, I knew I always, uh, uh, you know, and I told my dad I, I wanted to, to have a more professional um, route in life. And, and, you know, who knew it would be with government service and, mm-hmm. and you know, now in the political arena, um, you know, that's where, that's where my, uh, my desire to give back and my desire to help is really taking shape. Gotcha. 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 Great answer. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And as you, the mentors that your father mainly have, have kind of uh, gave you a foundation to uh, want to wear that tie to actually uh, you had to dream to be on sports center uh, uh, ESPN. Uh, but now you're doing stuff in the same community that you're growing up in and you're still wearing a tie and you're wearing it at a prestigious level. You're doing the wonderful things. Uh, and like you already stated that you've already uh, won the election, the current recent election as a democratic nominee for uh, state representation. What are your goals and, and, and inspirations or dreams uh, once you get this position? What, what would you like to see accomplished? Sure. I mean, I think, I think there are, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit. I mean, the pandemic mm-hmm. laid a yeah. lot of things bare in terms of what we could be doing better, you know, mm-hmm. as a state, as a nation, as a community, um, you know, and, and you see it, I think, you know, day to day, um, I think probably more more plainly than than me or any of us, you know, in in terms mm-hmm. of your encounters with Forefront, with yeah. people every day, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, as a as a law enforcement officer, um, you know, you you catch people in in the tough moments, mm-hmm. and uh, since the pandemic, the moments have just been tougher. There's so much pressure on people, uh, you know. Th- three of the things that we really um, focused on with our campaign uh number one uh great schools Mm -hmm. um you know we we have a situation here where where uh the central dolphin school district and susquehanna township school district are two of the most underfunded schools Mm. uh in in the entire state and what do i mean by that i mean that um you know there are there are other um you know wealthier school districts that can afford a higher tax burden Mm-hmm. And they can afford to give their kids the best of everything. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's they have they have the income level and the tax base to do that. Um, you know, and and Susquehanna Township has always been had a reputation previously as a as a low tax, um, you know, high value mm-hmm. uh, community with the school district. And and you know, even when I was campaigning for state representative, I mean, or I'm sorry, even when I was campaigning for commissioner. I can't tell you how many times I knocked on the doors of my former classmates or uh, anything like that. And it was, you know, well, we moved here 20, 25 years ago because mm-hmm. of the school district, because they value, yeah, yeah. you know, your mm-hmm. parents are the same. I, I just articulated it's why my dad moved us back here. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he knew what we were getting and, and education was important for him. So, you know, education is key. That's yeah, one of the yeah. big things. And we have the resources to do it. I think, you know, I think the state government, you know, the state government has a, there's actually a Supreme Court case going on right now in terms of the the funding that the state provides uh, to education for education. Okay. And I think in, in those areas where, um, you know, the local tax base can't match uh, what students ought to have, um, you know, I think the state government, it's incumbent upon the state government to step in. So that's one thing. Second thing is health care hmm. um, and, and providing affordable health care to each and every uh, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a particular um personal story with this. And I, you know, I've thought, I've thought about this for years and I've Uh thought, you know, affordable healthcare is a key. I mean, you know, even going back to the affordable care act, what was the Mm -hmm. point of the affordable care act? It was so folks who got sick, didn't go bankrupt Mm -hmm. doing things like uh, not allowing companies to deny coverage from a pre-existing condition, Mm -hmm. covering kids until they're 26 years old, Um, you know, providing extra prescription drug coverage. So, Mm -hmm. so seniors who need uh, medications can afford it. Um, You know, I think the ACA did a lot of good things. Did it get us all the way to where we needed to be? It did not, but I think it was a good start. Now what we have to do is build on it. And again, Mm -hmm. I think it's incumbent upon the state to, to, you know, really step in and provide that buffer, um, you know, and uh, like I say, I've thought about that for years, but it was crystallized for me when my daughter was diagnosed with type one diabetes in June of 2020 during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, and for those of you who are unfamiliar, I'll just do a really quick, uh, uh, quick overview. Type one diabetes is an autoimmune disorder. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially her pancreas is failing or has failed. Uh, the pancreas produces insulin Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it, it just, it, it does not work properly. And so, um, she needs insulin. Uh, she needs medical doses of insulin to survive on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Uh, Without it, she will die. It really is. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, while she is a child, she has coverage through Medicaid. Uh, my wife and I are fortunate. My wife is is you know has health insurance for the entire family mm-hmm. uh, as a state senate employee. So we are very blessed and fortunate there. Um, you know, but what happens when she becomes an adult? Right. Uh, w- whatever she wants to do, or, her, or, or is she going to have to set aside her hopes and dreams because she absolutely yeah. needs to have a job with health insurance coverage, which is the primary yeah. way you know, which is the primary way folks get insurance and. Mm-hmm. Again, going back to my earlier point, we saw during the pandemic, probably not the best solution if, you know, we have a situation where our economy is is cratering, people lose their jobs. Not yeah. only do they lose their jobs, they lose their health insurance coverage. Mm-hmm. So it's probably not the best model to go with, right? And we know this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, so that's number two, you know, affordable health insurance coverage for all. And the third thing is voting rights. Uh, that we really honed in on Um, voting rights and protection of voting rights, making sure that um, each and each and every legal Pennsylvanian who wants to can vote, um, you know, fairly and freely. Um, And we see we have seen over the years that that has been under attack. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the the fourth thing we really honed in on, too, is, um, you know, getting a fifteen dollar minimum wage. Um, and, and that doesn't even, you know, $15 is, is the least of what we ought to be doing right now. Our minimum wage is $7 and 25 cents in Pennsylvania. Uh, we trail all of our neighboring States 
who That's what I was making in, in, in back in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we trail all of our neighboring states, who I think all but one have a plan to go to fifteen dollars within the next yeah. three years. Um, you know, so if you live on, you know, and, and that's bad from a competitive standpoint, if you live in Southern York County mm-hmm. and you can go over the border to Maryland, um, where they were, you know, where they pay 13, $14 an hour, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. we've got Pennsylvania residents who are, who are working in Maryland, paying taxes in Maryland, paying income taxes in Maryland, but they live here, mm-hmm. you know, so it's, 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 you know, there are there are a number of reasons to do it, but chief among those is economic competitiveness, you know, and, and Pennsylvania is bordered on all sides by another state. So uh, we are it really we are putting ourselves at a competitive disadvantage for our workforce by keeping our minimum wage at seven twenty five. Um, and also, you know, the last thing I'll say in terms of what we look for as a campaign was, you know, things like, um, you know, paid family leave, paid sick leave. You know, whether we do that through a statewide bank that employers and employees pay into, whether we mandate that employers do it, Mm -hmm. uh, it needs to be done. It's long overdue. I'll tell a quick story. I mean, my dad, like I say, my dad was a truck driver, Mm -hmm. you know, and and he was this was back in the early 90s. He was in a position. He was a non-union truck driver. He was in a position where if he didn't work, if he didn't drive that day, he didn't get paid. Right. He his best friend passed away from pneumonia. He actually contemplated not going to his funeral. Because wow. he wasn't going to get paid. Wow, I mean, well, that's a hurtful feeling. And, yeah, and that was that was twenty five, thirty years ago, and yet we still got workers in that situation. Mm-hmm. And again, I say all this. I I talk about all this with the backdrop of the United States being the richest nation in the history of civilization. Mm-hmm. If other countries can do this, we can do this too. We just need the political will, and and so, you know. She, those four things and many others are on my mind to to get uh, get to work on um, if I'm fortunate enough to be uh, elected the next state representative in the 105th. Gotcha. Gotcha. Very. You're going to be very busy. I can tell right, right off the gate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's there's just no shortage of things to do. And, and oh, yeah. I'll just say one other point, not to mm-hmm. not to take up the whole conversation on this, but, you know, from the state perspective, the state's about to do a budget. We mm-hmm. it's always in the news every June, right? The the exactly state budget, the state budget deadline, June thirtieth, June thirtieth. We hear about this, and so um, you know negotiations are going to start in earnest. There are about nine billion dollars over what we anticipated that they have to work with. The wow. state general assembly has the funds to solve some of these problems and do some of these big things. Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately, they they had some of this funding last year. They chose to put two point four billion into the rainy day fund, which okay, fine if if you know. But I would argue for a lot of families, it's a tsunami. It's been it's been pouring for years, mm-hmm. and so you know it's time to push some of that funding out to folks who can, you know, who it can help and whom it can actually do some good. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully they, the, the general assembly and the governor choose to make, uh, make that choice this year. Wow. Interesting. See that, look at that. You, I just learned something by this conversation right here. Just, yeah. So I'm curious, I know your campaign is, is you have very strong and valid points. Uh, I know you, you're going to, get to work very hard, very earnestly, as you said, on uh, trying to make a difference, a positive difference in the life of Pennsylvania's Pennsylvanians. Uh, law enforcement in particular, what kind What kind of vision do you see um, once you get nominated in this position? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit beforehand. I mean, I'm blessed mm-hmm. to live in this community. We're blessed to live in this community and we're blessed to have you as an officer in this huh, community, thank you. <laughs> Officer Tillman, honestly. Um, but you know, one of the things we talked about is, you know, while we are, while we are well positioned, uh, here in Susquehanna Township, that's not Mm -hmm. the case elsewhere. Um, you know, we talked about, you know, one of the things we could work on is having uniform standards Mm -hmm. from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I know, you know, one thing that is very important for Susquehanna Township and one thing that we put an awful lot of time in is accreditation. Mm-hmm. We want to be an accredited law enforcement agency, and that's something that's very important to us. 
Right. Um, and I think rightfully so. Um, you know, what accreditation does is it, it, it gives you a seal of approval, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, from an outside entity that's saying, OK, this law enforcement agency is doing the things it ought to be doing. Right. Um, you know, and I, I know a lot of law and other law enforcement agencies across the state uh, are accredited as well, but not all. So maybe mm -hmm. that's something right. we look at yeah. uh, and and providing funding for it. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the the. The General Assembly likes to do a lot of unfunded mandates, right? Whether you're talking about education, whether you're talking about, you know, local governments, uh, okay, or, you know, even things like environmental I'm protection. Sorry, you, you, froze for, you froze for one second. You froze for one second. Can you repeat what you just okay, said? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It didn't come through. So I, I, I just said the, the General Assembly likes to do unfunded mandates, which is tell you to do something, but okay. not necessarily provide the resources to do it. Uh, you know, I think if mm -hmm. we take that step to say law enforcement agencies ought to be accredited, we ought to provide them the resources uh -huh. with which to do it. Um, to do so, in the you know, like gotcha. adopting, yeah, adopting in addition to accreditation, adopting uniform standards around, you know, who can be a law enforcement officer, uh, you know, stricter mm -hmm. background checks. I know for us, we usually do, we, do, we usually do background, uh, mental health evaluation and mm -hmm. things like that. But I don't know if that's done in every department. So, you know, tightening some of those things up, um, right. you know, and I think I, I think overall it just, you know, one of the things that we were talking about is just the value that our law enforcement agency has in its community um, mm -hmm. and how you see residents here. Again, it's not adversarial. It is, wow. you know. It used to be on, you know, Dragnet, right? The LAPD to protect and serve, right? And I right, think that's exactly. still the mantra here in Susquehanna Township. Mm -hmm. it, it's viewed, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. It's it's viewed as public service, and I think, um, you know, I think if we if we can get back to that in a lot of communities where, you know, it, it's not an adversarial relationship, it is viewed law enforcement policing is viewed as public service, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I, I think. You know, my dad really early on, you know, when we had a conversation about law enforcement encounters and things, um, you know, there has to be a level of respect paid as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can't if I'm stopped, you know, I'm going to, you know, listen, hear what the officer has to tell me, um, you know, and I think I think it, you know, more of that, too, could be helpful if we could just get to a point where, you know, instead of, you know, raising the temperature on some of these encounters right away, you know, listening to one another and, you know, uh, and and taking that approach instead of and uh, listen, I get it. Um, you know, I've I've only been stopped once um, by by a uh, law enforcement officer is when we lived in Harrisburg. I was uh, maybe going slightly faster than I should have on Front Street, um, you know, and, and everything got handled and everything got resolved, um, fortunately enough. But, um, you know, I think I think those are the things that we can really take a look at on the accreditation side, on the standard mm -hmm. side, um, you know, and and. You know, I hope we I hope we also get to a point where we've got, um, you know, folks who in law enforcement who who truly are pursuing that public service aspect. And I know that's the case here in Susquehanna Township. Yeah, absolutely. I can 100 uh, percent say that as well. Um, I think I, I, I can speak for myself. I, I, can, I feel like I can speak for a lot of other officers that I know. You don't get in this job uh, to, to make a, a boatload of money. You don't get in this job to get a, a boatload of accolades or pats on the back because uh, most most things that go they go unseen because you're helping the public, you're moving it forward, you're helping people out. Uh, a lot of times, a, a good a, a wise man said this: you deal most most police officers deal with good people on their worst day and bad people on their best day. So you kind of get a, a, a view, a certain view of every single time you go to work, you're dealing with some sort of chaotic problem. And it kind of weighs a toll on you, but you have to understand that this is, is it's a way of life that we chose. It isn't a way of life that the public, uh, they, they had a bad situation. Say it's a car accident. They're having a bad time. Our job is to help them through that bad time. Our job is to help clean up the, the get, get clean up the spilled milk, basically. Mm -hmm. well, milk mm -hmm. has been spilled. We are there to clean it up and to get everyone's life on track. 
And and I'm really blessed to be in the position I'm in, uh, Officer Tillman. I mean, I have, you know, we, we talked about it um, before the interview, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it, we've had these high profile incidents with, with mm -hmm. law enforcement and, and citizens across the country, um, you know, officer involved shootings and things of the mm -hmm. like, um, you know, and, and my lack of understanding uh, when some of those things occur has, has really been aided by my, uh, my sister mm -hmm. uh, who was, who was a law enforcement officer. She's a, she's a major, um, you know, in a, in a Missouri police department mm -hmm. and having her as a sounding board um, has been invaluable with the I way bet. I understand the law enforcement perspective, because it's easy. It really is. It's so easy mm -hmm. to, to, to be, uh, and, and I have been very emotional when some of these things happen. And, mm -hmm. and you just think to yourself, well, how could this have happened? What what is the circumstance and what was that person thinking? And um, I'm I'm really fortunate to have, um, you know, a, a sister who who I can go to and say and ask those questions and have a, right. a real dialogue right. and, 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 and an honest conversation about these things. And I think, um, you know, like I say, I think that. I think it really starts with that from any sort of conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. You have to try to get it start from a place of mutual understanding. And I know that is so much easier said than done. So mm -hmm. much easier said than done. And and here's the fact of the matter. Yeah, and I'll just hard things though. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I mean, I, you, you said it. It start, It's uh, not an easy thing to do. I said so you have to do the hard things. You have to take the risk and do the hard things because through the hard things, that's where the conversation and the communications happen that are necessary. Ab absolutely, absolutely, no question. And and I, you know, I'll just speak for myself here. I'm not speaking mm -hmm. for anybody else because uh, I don't want to. You know, if this is an unpopular opinion or whatever, or or just a, a flat out wrong opinion. I mean, I think part of the frustration is when you see incident after incident mm -hmm. um you know it, it's not it's not just that it happened and mm -hmm. it's you know there's a there's a here we go again but there has been a stunning lack of accountability in mm -hmm. some of these in some of these things um right and i think you know just rewinding two years here we're 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 two years um from the anniversary of the the killing of george floyd mm -hmm. um and you know, that was, I think, you know, part of, you know, we saw the we saw the protests, um, you know, and the unrest as an outgrowth of that for a variety of reasons. One of which I think was, you know, while we were still in the midst of a pandemic, it was a chance for people to just release. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, frustration, not only not only for for that killing, but also for the circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and and so, but you know, that was a situation in which there was accountability mm -hmm. through the legal through the legal system, mm -hmm. and you know, so and I think that, you know, unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, an incident like this is going to happen again. It's just a matter of of when and where. Um, but you know, if if we start to see a circumstance in which when these things happen, if, if an investigation is completed and it's, and it's found that accountability should be laid and it happens, you know, mm -hmm. I think, I think that will go a long way to lowering the temperature as well. Right. Right. I, I can, I can agree that, um, you know, the accountability on both sides as well. They can absolutely communication. I, I know we kind of discussed and alluded um, backstage on a, a situation. I, I don't want to actually call out um, certain locales or or uh, but I mean, certain shootings involving innocent individuals, put it that way. Um, and it, it's happened recently. Uh, unfortunately, it's happened in the past, and hopefully, knock on wood, it, it won't happen again for a very long time somewhere else. Um, but some of these situations, uh, I, I feel, can be um, minimized or avoided 100% um, just through education accountability as well. Um, it, funding going to certain trainings um to having certain staff or having certain securities or security measures in place for uh so for soft targets is basically what it is someone who mm -hmm. decided to wake up to do something very evil has 
pick the soft target to, to go ahead and, and handle their business. And it's unfortunate that the victims and the victim's family have to fall victim to that situation when it could have probably been alleviated um, before it actually happened. Well, and I think we've seen that. I mean, uh, I'll just I'll go back a few years ago. Um, I believe this again, this was several years ago, but I think the number was around in one of the state budgets. I think it might have been the 1920 state budget. I mean, it was it was in the wake of of um, this is terrible. I, I can't even remember which one exactly, but one of the one, mm -hmm. one of the school shooting incidents. Um, and I think it was around 60 million dollars. Uh, through the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency for uh, Office of Safe Schools grants, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and you know you, you know, obviously our 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 prayers, uh, you know, I had a post about it in the wake of Evalde. I mean, mm -hmm. thoughts and prayers just aren't enough. I mean, really, listen, we we talked about this a little bit um, mm -hmm. backstage, as you mentioned. I mean, my my these these types of things hit me a little harder. Um, and, and I'm sure a lot of other parents, I mean, my, mm -hmm. my son was in kindergarten, uh, when Sandy hook happened mm -hmm. in 2012. Mm -hmm. Uh, my daughter is a fourth grader and we just see what happened down in, in Texas. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, when, when you're in that circumstance, you can, you know, you can sympathize so much with those parents because it's literally unimaginable for me Officer Tillman to to mm -hmm. put my kids on a bus in a morning in the morning, and them not mm -hmm. come home to me in the afternoon. I mean, I can't even right. if I try to think about it, I'll I'll break down. I um, and, and so and so, you know, there are certainly things that can be done, but I think you know we have to we have to strike a balance as well with and and we have data to. I mean, when you look at when you look at the type of weaponry involved. Mm -hmm. You know, we can ask ourselves, does that need to happen? Yes. Evil people will do evil things. There's no right. question about it. Right. But, you know, in the United States, we've never just said, oh, well, and thrown our hands up. I mean, we we solve problems, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and unfortunately, you know, more. I think that's where we are with incidents like this, where we're just like, oh, well, you know, and, and that can't be the posture. That can't no, be the posture when you. And when you look at when you look at things like I'll I'll even go back to Aurora in the movie theater. I mean, what mm -hmm. what was the 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 guy had James Holmes had a drum of ammunition mm -hmm. that that held three hundred rounds. I mean, or or a hundred a hundred plus rounds. Mm -hmm. You know, is that necessary for a civilian to have? Um, you know, I I think. I think some of these things, you know, need to be examined. It can't just be a posture of, oh, well, something terrible happened. Bad things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. What can you do? I mean, we're problem solvers in this country. We always have been. I hope we always will be, um, you know, and so I, I get a little offended when it's like, well, we just need to deal with this terrible thing that's happening. No, let's solve the problem, um, you know, and and if, you know, I think. I've seen I've seen different analyses. Well, you know, what if what if the young man had gone in with handguns instead mm -hmm. and he had to take some more time to reload? Could that have saved some lives? Could that have mitigated some of the loss of life and the injuries? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of of use of, of firearms that well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the, I think these are I, I think these are some things that we we need to examine. Um, you know, I, I once talked to one of my constituents who was a, a World War II veteran. Okay. And um, and he, he's a wonderful man. And it, again, it was in the in, in the wake of another um, shooting um, at, at a school. And, you know, he had weapons of war, truly, mm -hmm. because he was in war. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, he, he said to me, civilians shouldn't possess these weapons. These are weapons of war. And, uh, um, you know, I don't think that's an attack on anybody's rights. Right. Um, certainly, we, you know, I, I believe that, that you know, I, I believe in the Second Amendment. Right I believe arms, that, yeah. Right. I mean, I, and I think you have a right to, to protect oneself and one's family. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. not, I'm not taking issue with that. But we also have to look at the context. When that document was written... Um, it took about a minute 
to load a muzzle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the context that was present when those words were written. Um, so, you know, I would just throw that out there as, as something to think about as well. Think, it, yeah. it, it took a minute to load one round <laughs> into your muzzle. Um, and so, you know, I, I, again, I just can't, I, I just don't think we can be in a position where we, where we see a challenging problem and just do not move to solve it. Absolutely. That's uh, something to get the gears turning. Definitely. Definitely something to, to think about. Uh, right now, I'm going to pause for the calls. Like I said, uh, our one of our sponsors, One Way Publishing, I uh, got to give them a shout out. Uh, so stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back. And I know May is coming to a close very quickly here, but some I, uh, some of you may know, some of you may not, uh, that May is uh, Mental Mental Health Awareness Month. Sorry, doing two things at one time. So you know, it's always good to get that mental health uh, get, get, get mental health checked. It's always good to, to talk to someone. It's always good to get that therapy done. It's always good to read that book. Get something out. Get whatever's inside of you out so you can think clearly, speak clearly, be, be the better, the best version of yourself. And like I said before, the book's behind me. There's one right here. One, one Way Publishing has hashtag grudge. Make sure you guys check that out. But we're going to jump right back into this interview. We've talked about so many wonderful dynamic topics on uh, uh just the state of the nation, the state of, of uh, Dolphin County itself, the state of Susquehanna Township, law enforcement throughout that whole concept as well. Um, we talked a little bit on uh, finding uh, you, you've sat in on um, interviews where you got to uh, um, interview and kind of uh, vet uh individuals who wanted to be part of the police department and those some made it some did not uh what kind of problems do you see since mainly covid on uh, finding qualified applicants uh not only for local police departments but on a national level yeah i mean the um you, you know my my thought on this really is is more anecdotal than anything i mean we we as the board the the um Director of Public Safety Martin usually brings two or three candidates before us, um, you know, makes a recommendation. We we sit down with them. Um, 
you know, but but he and others have mm-hmm. just identified a real difficulty in um, in you know trying to find qualified candidates who want to be um, you know who, who want to be part of law enforcement, right. and and it, you know it is it is distressing because I think you know right now it's law enforcement, it's been teachers for a long time, mm-hmm. um, and I think you know public servants generally. You yeah, know, yeah, I can see that. government, yeah, government and public service, I, I'd say for the last decade, decade and a half, just hasn't been held in high esteem. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, hopefully that changes, that turns around because we need good people doing this work, mm-hmm, um, absolutely. you know, uh, and and it really is why I was called to public service. I mean, I, I have loved being a commissioner, Um you know, being a commissioner, very rarely do we get involved in political fights mm-hmm. and anything like that. You know, I and I I trust your perspective on this, uh, Officer Tillman, because I'm biased. But I think, you know, we as the Board of Commissioners conduct ourselves pretty well, um, mm-hmm. you know, not only behind closed doors, but but out in, in public and in public meetings. Um, you know, I, we all care about this community, even if we disagree, we do so respectfully. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but we all care about this community. I think um, for me, being a commissioner has been wonderful. I get to help my neighbors. I get emails, phone calls. Hey, could you fix this pothole? Could you? Uh, my leaves didn't get picked up. My trash mm-hmm. didn't get picked up. Um, and, and I enjoy that. I enjoy that aspect of it very much. Um, you know, I also had to have a full time job. And part of it was frustrating that I couldn't dig in uh, in mm-hmm. a way that I would have liked. And so, you know, that's part of the reason why I ran uh, for the state representative position is because now I can pursue helping people full time. And right. that is, again, that is what I'm called to do. I am, that's you passion. know, even in my, through, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I have 18 years experience in and around government. Um, mm-hmm. I've, I've, I worked for the state for six and a half years. Um in in uh, you know communications roles with three different okay. state agencies, um, my last job uh, with the Rendell administration was press secretary at the Department of Agriculture. Um, you know, and then I've worked for three nonprofits, two two of which involve mental health. So thank you for okay. uh, thank you for the shout out for uh, mental health. May being Absolutely. Mental Health Awareness Month. It's it's critical. Um, you know mental health is is the thing that's so unseen that that um and and you know to go back to earlier in our conversation in education i mean it's affecting kids so bad. yeah it is yes it is. Uh, partic- particularly coming out of the pandemic as we mm-hmm. as we emerge from the pandemic i mean you know we've had learning loss that those kids won't get back and so we need to we need to start prioritizing the mental health in our children um you know and 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 destigmatizing folks who who seek mental health Health treatment and, I and um so and it's 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 especially um it is especially important in in law enforcement um law enforcement ems uh okay. police firefighters ems mm-hmm. um that critical incident stress management i mean you guys see some things and uh, you men and women see some things that the rest of us can't possibly fathom you know mm-hmm. whether it's an accident whether it is uh you, you know, a violent incident, you know, you name it. Uh, I'm sure you've been called to some scenes that, you know, a lay person like me just may not be able to handle. And, um, you know, how you process that, how you deal with it and how you recover from that is so critical. So um, it, it's huge. And and I'm, I'm glad to see that, at least in, in law enforcement, from what I'm hearing, you know, that barrier is being broken down a little bit. Law enforcement, military service, Mm -hmm. uh, that barrier is being broken down. And, you know, hey, if you need help, Mm -hmm. feel free to seek it. We need you to seek it because we need you to to come back and be strong and be able to process the the things you're dealing with. So, um, you know, but going back to my original point, um, you know, we just need we we need really good people in public service. and, And I hope we can get back to that again. Gotcha. Gotcha. I want to touch on uh, you, you said uh, mental health. I, I didn't know you were in the mental health uh, arena uh, uh, prior to um, any of your other occupations or services. Uh, so that's good. Kudos to you. That is uh, start slowly becoming destigmatized. Like you said, it is. 
with the wars that have gone on and military officials uh, or military personnel that are coming back and having PTSD or people in, in first responders, especially since COVID or before and after is becoming the forefront of court, uh, kids are also the learning curve. It, it is OK. It is OK to seek help. It is OK. That, that's the norm. If you're if you're unhealthy um, and you go to a gym to work out to get your body back into a certain uh, form, that's considered normal. That's considered, OK, you're, you're working toward a certain goal. It's the same thing with your mind. Same thing with your emotions. You have to work those things out and you work those things out uh, professionally with a professional. And it is OK. Um, our department and most uh, local departments here in Dolphin County have co-responders that go out with us. So we're, we we we're educated. I would like to say I would like to believe that we're educated in that capacity a lot more than we were 10 years ago. I know that for a fact. However, we have a professional that rides along with us to handle those situations as well, because we deal with we're dealing with mental health situations so much more. Yeah. And um, I'm glad you mentioned it. It was it was on my list. And uh, when we were talking earlier about sort of the things I'm, I'm proud of, you know, uh, of being a part of with the township, uh, mm -hmm. that's one of the huge things. Um, and and, you know, Director of Public Safety Martin briefs us um, on those calls. And it's it's, again, another feather in the cap of our department because, you um, you know, we I don't know if, you know, we were the first in Dauphin County or whatever, but we've been on the vanguard of this issue. And mm -hmm. and, you know, you see a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the rhetoric around policing nationally mm -hmm. is, um, you know, is really, you know, making sure that that um, not only are we treating every situation like a police incident, mm -hmm. but responding appropriately. Right. Mm -hmm. So so if somebody is in crisis, right, you may not necessarily need an officer to, to be the best respondent there. You may need a, a social worker or mm -hmm. a psychologist or another mental health professional to, to help that person in crisis. Um, I remember seeing an incident years ago. It was a gentleman, um, you know, who, who was in the I, I don't remember all the details, but he's sitting in the middle of a public street. Yeah. And and, you know, just the the response is, um, you know, if you're unfamiliar with something, I just don't think that makes for a great response. Uh, mm -hmm. If there isn't a lot of familiarity or getting back to your earlier point training. So mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we do that is so huge. And uh, I, I will say, um, you know, from from what we understand, um, you know, uh, Chief Martin is extraordinarily happy with the way that is going, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and that response from the from the mental health side, too. He says it's been a wonder for the department. And so I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled about that. You know, hopefully we can provide resources if it is a helpful. Uh, you know, it's, it's our job as the commissioners to provide resources to to make sure that is staffed adequately. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can continue to make that investment um, in, in, in that piece of, of the response team. Perfect. Perfect. I want to kind of uh, ask another question here, kind of changing gears just a, just a little bit. Uh, I, I, your stint as a commissioner, um, and you talked about some conflict resolutions, conflicts on, on whether it's in-house or during, uh, that wasn't an arbitra uh, arbitration or anything like that with a meeting. But I mean, conflicts arise. Uh, how, do, how do you deal with conflicts as a commissioner and how do you foresee, because conflicts are going to be coming uh, as a state rep, how do you foresee yourself handling even uh, con larger conflicts on a larger scale? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I, number one, I've, I've had help. I mean, I did, I did government relations for the National Association of Social Workers, Pennsylvania chapter and the Pennsylvania Psychological Association. So okay. representing social workers and psychologists, I've gotten mm -hmm. a lot of, um, I've had a lot of great conversations with, um, you know, those professionals in terms of like resilience and conflict resolution. And I, I am, you know, okay, so all bets are off if I'm watching sports. So I'm not really calm <laughs> when I'm watching sports. Um, but I, I would say generally, um, I'm a calm person. I mean, the way I view this and, and listen, just because I approach these, these big issues and these big challenges with a level of calm mm -hmm. does not mean I am passionate. Mm 
or I am not passionate rather. I understand. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I have a burning desire to see some of these things done because I know we can do it and I know we have to do it in, you know, so we don't spend another two or three decades leaving families falling behind. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is, I just think the way you approach others, you know, you have to do it in a measured way. You have to figure out, you know, rather than screaming and shouting, mm-hmm. you, you have to try to find a place of agreement. You have to make that attempt. Now, if it's not possible, then, then, you know, you figure out another way to try and, to try and get done what you're trying to get done. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I just, I usually, I'm, I'm sort of a catch more flies with honey type of, of person. And Mm -hmm. again, even, even when I was running for commissioner, you know, my, my pledge to people then was we can disagree, but I'm not going to be disagreeable. Right. I'm just, I'm, I'm not a screamer. I'm not a shouter again, as long as we're not talking about sports. (laughs) Um, you know, I I just, when you're approaching other people and we're all adults, I mean, I think, I think we should have the tools as adults to solve problems, um, in a way that is, befitting of adults right not you know young children don't have the tools to toddlers that's why they scream that's why they cry that's why Mm -hmm. they shout because they don't have the tools to resolve conflict you know as adults we should be mature enough to have the tools to do so and uh you know and 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 Unfortunately, with some adults, that's not the case. That's true. And, <laughs> and you know, if, if you find yourself, if you find yourself in a, in a conflict with somebody like that, um, you know, you figure out as best as you can if, if there's a path forward. And if there isn't, you live to fight another day. But, um, you know, that's that's sort of my approach to conflict resolution is always trying to get to some sort of agreement. Right. Um, you know, and, and, and again, when it comes to policy, yeah, I did government affairs and, and, you know, we're sort of wired if, if, if we can't get everything we want, mm-hmm. if we can get, if we can get half a loaf of bread, I'll take it, you know, and then you continue to work for the rest, right. but at least you got something, at least you advance the ball down the field. And that's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, I have a predilection to do doing that as well. Of, of, you know, reaching some point of agreement and then working toward the rest later. But at least we got somewhere. Gotcha. Good, good points. Good topics right there. Look at that. So I know it was, we're slowly wrapping up and we're not wrapping up just yet. So stay, stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We've still got some good talking points. Um, what would you like your legacy or what would you like your impact? Or what would you like to be known for? If there was one thing that you can do um, or, or can accomplish or, or successfully have done uh, in your career, what would you like that to be? Uh, I think at this point, from a policy perspective, I mean, I listen, I, I want to, every day I spend in Susquehanna Township, I just, I want to try and work to make my community better. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm on the board of trustees at the Hanna Foundation. I'm a commissioner. I, I think we're, I think it's important to give back. I've been a coach. Um, you know, I've been a homeroom parent. So <laughs> that's never going to stop. Right. And and I'll tell you this. I, I told voters this, too. Um, you know, j- to answer your question, first of all, the health care piece is so big for me. Mm-hmm. And and and, you know, folks being able to afford medical coverage is so critical. I mean, and, you know, the other thing that the ACA did was really try to make investments in preventative health care. Mm-hmm. And we see, you know. There are so many disparities, especially when it comes to health care with black and brown kids. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we we need to get the resources in place to end those. And, and for me, um, you know, it starts in two places with health care. It starts on the preventative side, mm-hmm. you know, getting kids doctor's appointments um, early on. So problems can be identified and 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 they can get the care that they need. And then from from an educational perspective, affordable pre-K and affordable child care, you know, to to get kids, you know, the from from zero to three years old, the neurons in the brain and the neuro pathways are firing at a rate that will never be replicated in in a child's life. 
Very so if movie. we can get, yeah, if we can get those connected, if we can read to our kids, if we can have them, you know, in in childcare with a with a curriculum, in in pre K with a curriculum, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I think pre K, I think pre K did so much for my kids. My kids were fortunate enough to be in in pre K. Uh, they went to the JCC. Mm -hmm. um, when they were, when they were, uh, that age and mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't trade any of it. I think pre-K was such a wonderful thing for them, but, but really if, if I could, if I could do two things, it would be affordable healthcare for everybody who needs it. And, 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 you know, building an infrastructure where every kid who wants to can, can get pre-K and, and get affordable childcare because it's, we could do so much good just doing those couple things. And, and, you know, the, the, the effects will last generation after generation oh, after yeah. generation in these kids. Absolutely. So that's the thing I've been doing for the last four years, Officer Tillman is, is, okay. uh, doing government relations for a, for a place called Pennsylvania partnerships for children. So I'm, ba I'm a lobbyist for kids. That's what I've been doing the last four years. And so trying to get money for pre-K childcare, children's health insurance, you know, just getting more stuff for kids. And so Absolutely. I'm very passionate about that as well. When do you have time to get anything done? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's I just, Listen, we I, we all have. I, I've been blessed to have the family that I do. Um, mm -hmm. Like we were discussing, I mean, I've been married for for twenty plus years to my high school sweetheart. Um, I've got two wonderful kids, that, you know, who have um, enabled me to be involved in this community as a coach, as as like I said, as a coach, as a homeroom parent, as a member mm -hmm. of the PTO. Um, you know, and and you know, just. I, I, I'm flattered by the question, but I always see that there is, you know, more, there's more, more meat on that ball, yeah. right. Um, you know, so, so the work continues and, and, um, you know, like I said, the, the one thing I, the one thing I wanted to say before is, um, you know, I have told voters this, if I find, um, to, to your earlier question about, you know, legacy and what you want to do, if I, mm -hmm. if I, am fortunate enough to become the state representative. And I find after four or six years that, that the system just cannot be repaired. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to stick around just to collect a salary and a pension and, and healthcare and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find out what I can do to help the greatest number of people I can, whether it's countywide, whether it's in my community, mm -hmm. I'm not going to stick around just for the role or the title or the perceived prestige. None of that interests me. Um, I just, I want to do good and I want to help as many people as possible. So, um, you know, I, I, again, just the trappings of whatever comes with being called state representative. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't care less about any of that. It's just about how, how can we, how can we improve the lives of people in this district and all of Pennsylvania? And, and again, if I find that that's just not going to be possible given our current iteration in, in the general assembly, then it's, then I'll find something else to do right. where I can be helpful. Man, I, I believe you'll be tremendously helpful. I mean, it comes through. It, you, you say you have a burning desire. You can see it. You can hear it in your voice. You can see it in your mannerisms. 90% uh, uh, of communication is nonverbal. And as you sit there, your shoulders are bouncing. You're leaning in forward. You're smiling. <laughs> like you can see it all. You can see it. So I 100% I believe you that, uh, that you will do a good job. And I know you want to do a good job. And I think you'll be tremendous in that role. Uh, yeah. Officer, it is it has been a pleasure being with you. Thank you um, for a great exchange of ideas. Um, and again, I, the one thing I will say, and, and I don't know, I don't know what what else is left. If you have more oh, questions, well, yep. if you I'm, hold on, one yeah, second, I've got time. Save it, yep. save it, because okay. it's going to lead into my next question. However, we got this this uh, last video. Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, brought on by One Way Publishing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sergeant Be Safe, and I'd like to give you some tips to help you be safe. I'll be introducing you to some helpful options that you can weigh out so you can be safe. 
Here's my office. I hope you like it. So let's have a seat and begin. So let's say you're riding along. And, oh, you get pulled over. Don't be surprised if you see another officer. It's just an extra set of eyes to keep everyone safe. Always keep your hands at 10 and 2 on the steering wheel. I know it's digital age, but always keep a copy of your driver's license, registration, and proof of insurance. Makes things go quicker, easier, and more efficient. So that way we can quickly get you on your way to have a safe day. There we go. There we go. I hope you guys like uh, whoever voiced that cartoon has a tremendous uh, working <laughs> voiceover. I, I got to meet that guy one day. But all jokes aside, uh, uh, seriously, I, I cut you off because I wanted to ask this last question, which I felt that you were about to get into. Uh, we, we had a dynamic discussion. We talked about so many different things. We got things out from our childhood. We got things, some things out locally, nationally. We talked about uh, so many different things. And, and through the course of conversation, uh, your memory may have gotten jogged or I may have forgot to ask a question. Is there anything that you would like to leave with us on the floor? Right now, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, officer. Again, I, I just appreciate this opportunity. Continue to do what you do. It's so important. And again, like I said, uh, we are blessed here in Susquehanna Township to to have you um, on the force, uh, a local homegrown guy uh, who knows this township inside and out. Um, the last thing I would say is, you know, we had a wonderful exchange of ideas tonight, um, but I'm always available. Um, feel free to get in touch with me. Elected officials do not have, uh, you know, have, have not cornered the market on good ideas. Uh, if you have ideas for uh, state laws or regulations or policy that can be helpful, uh, a problem that you see that needs solved uh, that we can do on the state level, please feel free to get in touch. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not presuming anything by saying that, uh, you know, I hope to, I hope to have the honor of serving this, uh, this district. Um, but again, I can pass good ideas on to our current elected officials, um, who, who in Susquehanna Township, it's still Sue Helm. So I can pass those ideas on to our current elected officials. But again, I just wanted to leave you with that thought and, uh, thank you so much for having me tonight. And I, I just appreciated the time to, to speak with you about a variety of important topics absolutely thank you very much it was a it's very fun very educational interview and ladies and gentlemen i wasn't going to call him out but he's donated his time uh with us he's not feeling the best right now so we've gone on for over an hour learning and uh, and discussing with him and he's not even at 100 right now so give him some likes give him some hearts give him some thumbs up you know we appreciate him uh being available for us thank you very much and ladies and gentlemen, make sure you guys tune in. To, we go live weekly. We will continue the process. We have another uh, scheduled guest coming up June 3rd. I'm not going to say who it is right now. So make sure you guys tune in and see and enjoy the show. Tag, like, and share and support the show. All right. We appreciate you. We love you. You guys have a wonderful night. And let me check this. Thank you very much. You guys be safe. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a good night.